Now that your surface is dry, you're gonna go back into the painting using glazes. We're gonna work from the first, from the side, using that red orange with a little bit of purple in it to make it more brown. I'm using the glaze so it's a thin layer of paint on a dry surface and I can move it around and wipe it off if I don't like the way it looks. I'm starting at the bottom where the coarse shadow comes into the middle of the pumpkin and I'm using a middle, um, a medium brush and I'm reestablishing some of the darks that may have been blended away or just need to be transitioned a little bit better than the first layer. I want to reestablish the um, grooves in the pumpkin with more of a purple, um, purple brown. Make sure that the right side of the pumpkin really descends into space using a darker color. And all the while I'm looking at my reference so I know where to place the color. I'm going with the contour of the pumpkin. So a lot of this is going back over your work, but doing it in a way that you are obtaining more information. So going from general to specific, this is more of a specific layer. So in this layer, you're going to look for reflective lights, um, reflective colors and some of those things that we generalize in the first layer. So at the top of this pumpkin, there are more grooves than we put in, we summarize in the first layer. So I'm adding a little bit of, um, I would say, orange with some blue in it, neutralizing it to a brown. So it has a little bit of a green, but um, more brown. I'm going back over the orange on the right side, I'm adding a bit more red um, to create that temperature change. And a little bit of brown into that side. Thinking about the complementary colors, the blue and the orange when mixed together make a, um, a neutralized blue or orange and as we add more blue to orange we also get brown so thinking about those colors as they mix you'll see some of those mixes happening on the pumpkin itself because of the reflective color at the top of the pumpkin though you'll notice that it's a little bit warmer than the right the bottom so at the top i'm adding a little bit of orange um, to kind of establish the grooves and also you know, show that it is orange, it is the local color of the object. So I'll go over those grooves a few times. I'm, I'm adding a little bit of brown in the, the, um, the back of the pumpkin um, while also keeping it dark. Again, before that complementary color mix that happens. And even though there are grooves here, I don't want it to feel like a line, so I'm softening the lines that I established earlier. So soft little lines to, um, for the grooves on the left sides. Nothing, nothing heavy, nothing outlined. And at the bottom of the pumpkin, you know, going back in and blending out some of those areas. There's a little bit of a division right there that I'm working on. So I drag some of the glaze in and it's a subtle line. And with the glaze, you're working quickly so you can blend in any of the areas. It 
In total, this, this whole video took me 25 minutes. I sped it up to 16 minutes to condense it. So I don't want it to be too um, dark at the bottom, even though there is a shadow. I'm just kind of going over it, making sure that it's not as blatantly dark as it was in the first layer. A little bit of orange there. And when I add the highlights to this, the warmer colors, it'll make more sense as well. So you can see I'm starting to add some of the, the brighter yellows to that midsection. And what I'm doing with my brush is I'm, I'm using a crosshatch, just as you did in the first techni technical page. I'm adding in the, the lights and then I'm going in the direction across it to blend it. And I'm using a really soft touch, so I'm not pushing too much pressure. My hand is further back on the brush so I can have a soft touch on it. I would say it's more like a feathering effect. softening with your brush. I don't have much paint when I do this. I wipe my brush off on a cloth and then I, I can feather things around. So it's mostly dry when I do blends and at times. The surface is wet though. So I'm adding an orange over um, what I did with the shadow and I'm blending it together so it still feels like it's, it's getting darker with that little glaze at the top. And I'm going over some of the edges that um, may have gotten some of the background in and any little bits of color that I need to blend out. Now I'm adding a yellow orange light yellow orange it has a little bit of white in it in the center and this is where my highlight comes in and i can just kind of brush it in and keep a little bit of my brushwork in there and because i added that orange next to it i can soften the edges so that there's a nice blend between the two and that makes it feel like the light is really hitting um, in that area At the bottom of the pumpkin, I've added a little bit of blue. Um, there is a little bit of blue reflecting into the bottom as well because it's close to the, um, the background. So a little bit of blue into that shadow. That'll make the grooves feel like they're sitting down on the uh, tablecloth. And it'll add more dimension to the pumpkin as the middle area is more bright and has highlights in the outer area of the pumpkins, um, it has more shadow. It's very subtle, these little things that you, that you add, but they do really, um, they are really effective.
going back into that highlight, um, really making it warm and bright and lighter in value. We'll tell the viewer that the light is hitting on that area of the pumpkin. And when you do all the other elements in the in the composition with the same light um, light structure, it'll make sense and be more realistic. So real soft brush strokes, you know, pulling a little bit of that light into the next um, layer of groove, however you would like to call it. And I'm having, um, I'm adding a little bit of brushwork here because it is more of a focal point on the pumpkin. So if you wanted to, you could play around here um, with your brushwork, you know, be more carefree and blend less, maybe even do a little impasto of the paint. You know, make it your, make it your own however you want to stylize it. This area has more of a focal point, so I can put a little bit more of that detail on here. Whereas the other parts descend into the background, so it's going to have less attention. I'm just doing this by adding brush strokes with paint on it, knowing where the values are, and um, letting it be, letting some of the colors intermix. And I have the glaze on there, so again, I can just soften all those areas where the dark meets um, into the mid-tone. Now going to the right side, I'm going to darken this a little bit more with um, a brown. Mix it with the orange, getting that neutralized orange color. giving it some contrast. I'm switching to a small brush. I'm adding a uh, red-orange highlight on the right side. That's where the light is hitting that groove that pops up. And I'm softening any little bit of edges, but I still want to keep that groove, um, that little highlight. It's darker than the, the lightest light, but there is a little bit of highlight along that groove. So the changes that I've made, um, they don't seem like they are big changes. It's more finding the details and, um, you know, being more specific. So I added a little bit of, like, gray-blue at the top. I'm going to blend that in with some brown, but it'll give the overall effect that, again, that background is, is hitting the top of the pumpkin. I think I went to too much with it, so I'll add some orange back into it. But what happens when these colors layer on top of each other, especially in thin layers, is that you'll see some of the layers coming through. Um, and it does create a more realistic effect because objects are not solid in color. And especially when they're put into a lighting situation, they reflect all different kinds of colors. 
Um, so it's important not to just blend out into one color as it'll look less dimensional and, and more of a, more like a toy that's manufactured and less organic. So you'll, you're probably going to go over some of these areas a few times like I have um, just to kind of create a balance of all these things happening. And again, I'm adding some brush work as I, as I go. You can see my brush is, is not just gliding across the surface, but adding a little texture into the paint. So however you want to add that. 